This is Lon Chaney in a 1918 propaganda film, with Rupert Julian as the Kaiser. Julian never got over the Prussian officer pose, and maintained it even while directing The Phantom of the Opera at Universal. There were rumours of tension between Julian and Chaney, but were they true? Oh, I know, I know the problems with Chaney and Julian were true. Uh, Charles Van Enger, the cameraman, told me that they, they just hated each other. Uh, Julian wanted a much broader performance uh, than what Chaney had in mind for his character. And Julian, kind of coming off of uh, replacing von Stroheim in the merry-go-round, probably thought, you know, he was, he was as good as von Stroheim, if not better. And the relationship between Chaney and Julian quickly went downhill. Nonetheless, Julian did a remarkable job. The Phantom is at first sketched in by suggestion. People thought Universal mad. Were they really paying Cheney to play a shadow? I mean, you can always tell Cheney, no matter how much makeup he's got on, you can tell it's Cheney by the use of his hands. They were like music. Some scenes were done in various color processes, hand shegel and technicolor. There were certain scenes in all of his films that he knew were set pieces, like on top of the opera house, late at night when the lovers are up there, and they think they've escaped the phantom, but he's above them in the wind. <laughs> or the moment when the Phantom comes down the stairs and freezes the people at the Mask of the Red Death. And then at the very end of the film, when the Phantom confronts the crowd and he rears back and he's got what they think might be a hand grenade or something in one hand, and he threatens them with a clenched fist, you know, and they all pull back. And then he opens his hand and laughs to show that he terrified them with nothing. That metaphor is the whole of Don Cheney. For a whole lifetime, he threatened you with his closed fist. And you knew there was something terrible in there. And at the very end of his life, what like that? And you saw there was nothing there at all. But you'd been terrified for no reason. Cheney's contract prescribed all photographs of the unmasked phantom to ensure the strongest possible impact in the theater. Well, a lot of people say that the makeup caused him great pain and great difficulty, but it's not true. The secret lay in a small, leather-covered box. This was Lon Chaney's makeup box. To many makeup artists, this is the Holy Grail. This is the makeup case that he created his thousand faces with. He started using this case in 1919 and used it until his death in 1930 was originally a mechanics toolbox. With these simple devices, Cheney created one of the most frightening faces ever put on the screen. He prepared much of his makeup on this wax model of his head, using cotton and collodion to create face pieces. And as far as the nose, he took a strip of fish skin, which is a thin, transparent material, that he would glue here on his nose with spirit gum, pull the nose up to whatever length or width he'd want, and then run it up the bridge of the nose and up under the skull cap so you'd have that effect. 